come to the, to the Granada, Granada, to the, to the IAA, IAA, and that happened in, in the 1998, and we, we were really very, very, very lucky. lucky. Uh, 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 he, he has, has been, been the director, director of, the of the institute between, between 2004, 2004 and 2007, and, and, and he, he has, has been, been also a leader of, of uh, many of, of the solar, solar projects. Project. He is the chair of the solar, of the solar, solar group, group in the institute from, from the very beginning, beginning. Um, and he has, has leader the, the IMAX Sunrise, um, is a solar orbiter, is copy I, no? no? Yes. yes. Um, well, uh, right, right now, now from, from this year, year on, on uh, he, he has, has been elected, elected to be the, the chair or manager, as you like, like of, of the, the special research, research for the National, National Agency of Astronomy of, 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 of Science. Of science. So, so it's a very, 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 very big seminar, seminar today. today. So, so I, uh, I, uh, I really, uh, I, really uh, I am very, very great, great to him, him because, because uh, he took uh, some, some time, time um, in, 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 in his uh, agenda, agenda just to to speak in the in the seminar. So that is, uh, we are very, very, very thank to to him. So as when you want. Thank you very much, Pepa. Thank you very much to everyone here. Uh, it's uh, it's as always a pleasure to to be here to speak to, to my colleagues that I don't see many times because I'm traveling all all the year long. And uh, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I should start today by apologizing. This, this is perhaps my worst prepared uh, talk ever. Uh, this is so because I'm overwhelmed by my new duties as a national manager for space. And uh, uh, I realized that uh, I had committed to this seminar I, I, I realized the, the commitment last Monday when, when Pepa <coughs> issued the, the announcement. And uh, I, it, it is very, very unusual to me to, to be preparing the talk just uh, up to 10 minutes ago. Uh, so uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> and I, I hope you, you, will, you will forgive me. Uh, well, <coughs> the, this is a movie you, many, many of you have already seen, and uh, I, I still want to to show it because, as I've said several times, this was uh, one of my uh, uh, most uh, striking and, and interesting uh, events in my in my scientific career. Uh, it is. It does, doesn't correspond to the second flight of, uh, of Sunrise, but to the first one. Uh, we were in Kiruna, <coughs> and well, uh, you are watching it. I can tell you that uh, when we started in 2002 to this uh, adventure uh, of building uh, an, uh, an instrument for, uh, for an aerospace platform, uh, we couldn't realize what the, the history uh, will be in, in, the, in the following years, and it extends indeed up to now and to the future, because we are already preparing a third flight of, of, of Sunrise. Uh, well, uh, why the second flight? Uh, after the success of, of the uh, scientific success of the first one, uh, uh, we decided we, we should fight with our funding agencies uh, to, to repeat the, the, uh, the, the story. And uh, it, it was because we have succeeded in, in reaching unprecedented spatial resolutions uh, uh, of the 
uh, uh, with maps of the vector magnetic field and the line of sight velocities of the solar photosphere, almost free from seeing because we were flying on, uh, uh, on the stratosphere uh, with tilted online correction. <laughs> but uh, if you ask me for a main feature of the sunrise mission, I would tell you the rouge. Our main findings uh, with sun rays were related to evolution and indeed related to time stability of our instrument behavior. Uh, thanks to, to this stability, we, we uh, could record a, a series of 10, 30 minutes long uh, uh, during the first flight and do some, uh, we had we had still some discovery space because of the use of uh, UV imaging, which is uh, 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 wavelength area accessible from, from ground. Uh, but uh, uh, during the first flight, we had uh, a deep minimum in the, in the soil uh, activity, and it was a very good opportunity to repeat the flight during a maximum of, of activity in order to study as well uh, active regions. <coughs> so this, these are images. These are images of the uh, 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 I, um, of the three bands of in, in, in ultraviolet. If you if you allow me some advertisement or maybe you can call it propaganda, but I, I think it's important. Uh, uh, among the, all the papers have, uh, that have been published so far with Sunrise One uh, results, more than half are related only to uh, IMAX data, 31% uh, to IMAX plus SUFI data, and only 10% to the SUFI data. IMAX and SUFI were the only two post focus instruments aboard uh, the Sunrise mission. A one meter telescope flying in the stratosphere for five and a half days. Uh, in March <coughs> this year, we, we uh, published a, a special a special issue of uh, the Astrophysical Journal Supplement Series, uh, fully de devoted to results of the second flight. And I should say as well that in spite of the, the many technical errors we, we, have, we had with uh, both telescope and also with IMAX <coughs> during this uh, second flight. Again, the importance of, of, of IMAX in the uh, production of uh, uh, scientific results is remarkable. 41% are related only to IMAX results. Now, SUFI plus IMAX uh, uh, constitutes, again, uh, 41% and less than 20% correspond to SUFI alone. This speaks by itself of the importance of this uh, instrument, which is, as I said, the first uh, instrument ever conceived, built, uh, designed, built, and flown by, <coughs> by a, Sp a consortium of Spanish institutions uh, at, a, at an aerospace platform. Today, uh, so my, my, my aim, uh, my commitment, indeed, was to, to, to talk to you about a summary of these 17 papers, or more, more specifically, of the 14 with uh, Spanish authors. However, I <coughs> when, when on Monday I realized I, I was in a hurry, I said, well, mm, le let's talk just about a couple of papers. And yesterday I said, hey, that <laughs> concentrate in one and and do it as best as as uh, as you can. So <coughs> uh, I, I'm going to tell to to tell you a tale. Indeed, this is the this is the, the title of one of the papers. A tale of two emergencies. It is a tale because it's a, it is a small story, a beautiful story that takes place during 17 minutes. Uh, so. It's a, it's, a, it's a short, very short story, but very rich of, of, of uh, science and details, features, observational features that enlighten our, uh, uh, 
our understanding of how magnetic flux emerges through the surface and eventually uh, 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 rises up through the different uh, um, layers uh, of the atmosphere. Here you have data not from, from uh, sunrise, from the Hino, Hino the satellite, just to tell you what attributes are. They are the, the largest, biggest, strongest manifestations of magnetic fields on the sun. Uh, typically, sunspots uh, uh, appear in groups, as, as in here, but they are accompanied by pores without penumbrae and several other, several other features around. Uh, our current understanding of how these uh, active regions appear uh, uh, start with the formation of, or, or with the ascent of the uh, magnetic flux tubes that reside in the deep layers of the uh, convection zone by Bojan instability. So material which is within the flux tube, the magnetic flux tube, is less dense and then it, it floats, okay, and it emerges and eventually traverses through the surface of the sun in an omega omega shaped loop. Okay? <clears throat> so they they are often fragmented in bundles because when when they are reaching to the uh, near the surface, the convection, the uh, dynamics of, of material over there uh, fights somehow uh, with the magnetic field and and, and uh, uh, disrupt it in, in, into bundles <coughs> that later by also by the action of photospheric convection, aggregate and concentrate into sunspots. Uh, <coughs> but uh, very recently, in the last very years, uh, 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 in the very last years, uh, we are understanding that uh, indeed uh, mm, the, the importance of, on, on flux emergence is not that much on, on these big sunspots, but also in small scale uh, processes. Uh, uh, we are gathering uh, ideas about the that uh, probably most of the of the magnetic flux emerge, emerging uh, in the region is in the form of uh, small scale uh, fluxes. Then we have a, a, an idea uh, called by Paria and co-workers resistive emergence, where the omega loops develop. Uh, uh, to, um, in, 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 the abs in the ascent, develop undulations that uh, with crests which are buoyant and troughs which are trapped in the photosphere, the lower layers. Then these uh, these uh, structures can eventually release energy by magnetic reconnection when two opposite polarities collide after perturbations. This is a cartoon on how uh, we, we think the general, the general situation of magnetic field lines occur in an active region. We have a series of these such und undulations, so height is in here, the photosphere is this, uh, represented in this layer, here we have the chromosphere, the corolla, okay? So these uh, undulations uh, have been created by this interaction with convection, and when those and those two lines, by perturbations, by dynamic perturbation, collide, then magnetic reconnection takes place, and magnetic energy is released and transferred in other forms of energy, like uh, radiation or kinetic kinetic energy. Okay, so they are. Uh, believed to be associated to element bombs. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I, I couldn't attend one of the seminars given by Professor Hansen, who's uh, having uh, uh, sabbatical with us in here. <coughs> He's a, a world expert in, in this phenomena. <coughs> and uh, 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 these undulations are associated to, a, to an observational manifestation. People have been uh, uh, discerning magnetic di dipole, di dipole features, moving magnetic dipole features, moving around, uh, which are the, f the foot points of these uh, 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 lines. 
Uh, Ortiz, Ada, and co-workers uh, uh, last, last year were reporting on semicircular magnetic food points um, uh, 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 straddling over a few granules, granules that are typically 1.5 to arc seconds in size, <coughs> uh, and bracketing uh, uh, horizontal magnetic features in the photosphere. Uh, uh, when studying the, the spectrum of uh, chromospheric lines, these foot points are seen to be are, are, are seen to, to surround cool bubbles of, uh, of material that enlarge as, as they rise. So uh, uh, the results are in qualitative agreement with, with simulations and uh, the joint observations with the solar swings tower on ground and two space missions.
the opposite. It is uh, flanked by opposite polarity uh, patches. Mm -hmm. Here, black and white, the, this black and white, and, and, and white correspond to plus or minus 250 gauss, and blue and red corresponds to plus or minus 600 meters per second. Okay? So, <clears throat> in this very small uh, bright point, it's it, it, concentrated in, in, in an area less than 0.5 arc seconds. It is less than 300 kilometers in, 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 over there. But it is very interesting to, to look at the, uh, at the spectral line. Okay? Here you have the IMAX line in Stokes I intensity. Uh, blue is for granules. Okay? Red is for intergranules, those areas, darker areas surrounding the granules, and black is in the bright point. As, as usual, <coughs> granules are brighter, this is intensity, so uh, 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 granules are brighter, of course, are blue shifted due to, to convection, this is very well known, uh, with respect to intergranules that are red shifted and darker. But our bright point is significantly uh, 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 brighter than the granules. The line is very shallow, uh, uh, meaning, meaning that also in the, in the upper atmosphere uh, uh, there is an excess of energy, an excess of temperature with respect to, to the surroundings, surroundings as compared to, to, the, to, to the regular, regular areas surrounding them. Okay, so, and, and remarkably, it is very, very asymmetric. Asymmetries in wavelengths and asymmetries are uh, uh, the presence of strong uh, gradients of velocity along the line of sight. Okay? So, <clears throat> since this bright point is, as we are going to see, associated as well to chromospheric gradients, we think we are witnessing in this confluence area magnetic reconnection. Okay? So the release of energy because the uh, uh, confluence of two uh, different polar opposite polarities uh, uh, to, um, close to each other. Well, uh, we can calculate the magnetic flux, which is emerging through, uh, through our, through our uh, uh, field of view, but in particular we are interested in a box 3.7 arc seconds square uh, just to isolate the, the, the foot points. The negative foot point coming from the west uh, region and the positive foot point of the east region. Okay? Here, the flux of the east region, the positive is, is in here, in the solid line. The negative is in dashed line. At the very beginning of, of the series, we only have positive flux, okay? And as soon as the uh, uh, west negative foot point is approaching the area, entering the area, both polarities cancel out and then flux is decreasing significantly, okay? So the, the evolution, the evolution of, of, of the negative um, uh, flux is much less impressive because it is, it is uh, canceling out at the same time it is uh, uh, reaching the area, okay? So <coughs> uh, if we assume that all this decay in, in magnetic flux is due to cancellation, if we are speaking about our uh, magnetic flux loss of 2.5, 10 to the 16 Maxwell's per second. This is a lot. It is a lot because it, it, it is uh, one order of magnitude larger than that found by Reed and workers uh, last year, and about the same as that found by cocaine and co-workers just for the entire active region. This means that we are uh, uh, really observing with unprecedented resolution phenomena that are hidden by the poor resolution of previous 
of previous uh, uh, results. Okay, and, and moreover, the, the physical size uh, three, uh, three when 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 our second over the sun is uh, seven hundred twenty-five kilometers. Mm -hmm. So uh, three thousand kilometers square. Three thousand by three thousand more or less. So. <clears throat> So this uh, 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 flux cancellation means that we are putting available magnetic energy to the pool for it to be used by other phenomena uh, that can be spelling, expelling, uh, uh, ejecting material from the sun upwards or just uh, mm, enhancing the brightness of the, of, of the different areas. But our data are so rich that we can also mm, uh, derive temperatures, okay? And uh, uh, again, we are concentrating in the confluence area and discover uh, this is, this is uh, the, 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 our region, the east, the west, emergent regions, the uh, uh, elongated <laughs> granules are clearly seen, but this is not an image of, of the continuum. This is temperature. This is temperature at tau equals one. At the optical depth equals equals one. This this is fairly fairly known. A, a elementary radiative transfer tells us that we we see in brightness what corresponds to temperature at tau equals one. Okay. So, but this is a, 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 what's remarkable is the bright point is already see, clearly seen in temperature. It was not that well seen in brightness, but it is clearly seen in, uh, in temperature. And as a matter of fact, this confluence area is <coughs> 500 Kelvin hotter when the, the bright point appears than before. At higher levels, the two regions look very different. Look, as I was explaining to you before, as uh, cold, cool bubbles surrounded by bright, like hotter material, okay? And especially the, the hottest one is in the, in the conference area. But very interestingly, I don't know if you can discern and, and seeing them pretty clearly, a, a, a strange or even cooler material uh, through the, the two bubbles that connect the foot points the foot points, the foot points. So these strands are indeed aligned with magnetic field that we, we measured. Okay? Now if we if we take a cut uh, through through this uh, vertical line and display the uh, the temperature, the temperature in here, you can see how we reach temperature below four four thousand Kelvin. This uh, uh, very, very, very remarkable. However, in this very, in this very line, when <coughs> when the when the, uh, 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 the 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 magnetic field fades away, weakens, and so on and so forth, then the structure recovers the regular uh, variations of, of the temperature. Well, so much for 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 the. Bottom layers for the photosphere. Let's see what what happens up in the chromosphere. So as I said, the bands around calcium two H uh, uh, bring us information from chromospheric layers. Uh, here I rotated the image, so the original image uh, <clears throat> was horizontally in landscape. Uh, 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 here you can see you can see the east emerging region and the big elongated granule is now <laughs> upside uh, uh, upside down. Okay. Uh, here we have again IMAX continuum photosphere UV continuum, which is pretty similar with more uh, brightness enhancement and so on and so forth, and chromosphere the uh, calcium 2 edge, okay? So, 
in photospheric layers, we, we see the elongated granules aligned with the magnetic fields. Uh, the UV, again, is similar, but the, the chromosphere shows this dark bubble surrounded by bright points. This, this bubble is tra uh, traversed by, by a filament system, okay? <clears throat> and also, this confluence area is the brightest part in, in, of the image, okay? So, let's now concentrate in this rectangle, okay? Because I want you to, to see the evolution of filaments that are connecting these two foot points, with time, okay? <clears throat> so here we have what we, uh, this is the confluence area, this is the uh, negative polarity uh, uh, for the east uh, emerging region, time goes from top to bottom, and this, each rectangle correspond, corresponds to the rectangle I, I was showing you before. Okay, <clears throat> this is just intensity in the UV. Okay, so <clears throat> as you can see, as time, time goes by, a filament develops, a filament develops as a, 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 and, and, and this filament even, even seems to protrude from one foot point to the other, okay, in a dynamic way after it fades away when, <clears throat> when the field decreases, uh, uh, when the field weakens, okay? So as soon as the, the, the confluence area is, is being uh, forced by the two, by the two regions, <coughs> the, uh, the, the, the strength of the magnetic field increases uh, with time and these uh, filaments develop Connecting the two the, the two foot points. Unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, so this is very suggestive of material flowing physically down, uh, uh, physically from from one foot point to the other. Okay. However, we cannot confirm because unlike in the photosphere, we don't have spectroscopy information for the chromosphere. Okay. So we can only conjecture. What's going on uh, at, this, at these layers? But our idea is more or less confirmed also from photometry uh, taken with the AIA uh, instrument aboard the Solar Dynamics Observatory from, from NASA. So, uh, it, although they have much less uh, spatial resolution than we have, uh, uh, the observations confirm the appearance of, of these bright points of the arch filament system, the intensity increases until a huge bright point appears up there in the corona. And, <clears throat> and uh, we have checked that this brightening uh, shows up before the, our bright point in the chromosphere takes place. <clears throat> so just to summarize, uh, the, 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 the short story, <clears throat> let me, let me uh, 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 tell you that we have been uh, uh, observing with unprecedented re uh, resolution and time stability uh, uh, the, uh, a small scale phenomenon uh, that should be quite frequent over the sun. But, it, uh, but to our knowledge, no, no former observation has been reported on this double emergence uh, with, such a, with a, such a detail. This has been uh, possible because our study is based in two independent instruments flying in the same platform, uh, 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 gathering information from both the photosphere and the chromosphere. Continuity arguments indicate, indicate that the two emergent sites, the two emergent regions, indeed correspond to, to, to a single flux tube, which is uh, making its way through the, through the photosphere, <coughs> because the foot points 
show downflows, the horizontal fields show upflows during the ascent, during the ascent and and uh, and the uh, so and the evolution of, of, of the field is such that uh, uh, transverse fields are very weak when when the, the, the emergence starts and this can be checked with the west region okay uh, uh, the, the fields are weak when it starts rising then in freeze strengthen and immediately granulation deforms as a reaction of the of the pass through uh, of the magnetic field lines and reaches values above 700 gauss. This takes more or less five minutes. This is the lifetime of a granule. So this should be happening every single day, many many times, many many times uh, over the sun. Then at a given moment, upflow sees the field strength de uh, decreases and, uh, <clears throat> and then convection takes the charge and destroys what the field line had aligned. Granulation, these elongated granules, these elongated cells break down into pieces, take again the regular, the regular shape and in the pattern looks regular. So, and this takes in some just 10 minutes. Uh, it is true that uh, our argument for, uh, uh, for continuity between the two emergence region, regions uh, are a matter of debate. Okay? Uh, we don't have any other argument but heuristics. But uh, it is true that in the confluence area of these two emergent regions, uh, uh, we, found, we found a stage where many, many interesting uh, phenomena were taking place. The, the, uh, uh, it is certainly related to emergence, to interaction between magnetic fields and convection, to the possible release of magnetic energy through reconnection. We have been seeing like this, the apparent outflows, in the confluence uh, from, from the confluence area to one of the foot points uh, through the arc phenomenon system, the asymmetric profiles heralding gradient uh, uh, of uh, uh, velocity, velocity feature, um, gradients of velocity, etc. Whether or not this is uh, related to another bomb that took place adding the corona and uh, 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 Triggering, triggering the whole phenomenon from top to bottom in the atmosphere is, a, is, a, is something that we cannot discern, and, but it is tempting to, to, to think about, about that. And well, that's all for, for my tale, and let, let, me, let me finish by vindicating a claim. <coughs> uh, unfortunately, Neither the former nor the current director are, are here. They, they, they have excused the, their, their attendance. Uh, but that, I, I already said them that I, was, uh, I had this last uh, slide. So I, I came here in 1998. So it, it, almost these days, uh, it is my 19th anniversary here in the IEA. <coughs> Uh, right now, we are only two staff scientists since, since 2005, when Luis arrived to the Institute, and seven staff engineers, only four from, from 2002 on, and seven from 2008. We have built two flying instruments. Uh, we have gathered and brought to the Institute more than 10 million euros. We have written 125 uh, scientific papers in SCI journals, one monograph in Cambridge University Press, which is not a, a, an edited proceedings, okay, but the, but the monograph, more than 3,400 3, citations, and after these almost 20, 20 years, only one position for solar physics has been allocated to, to the IAA. This is to the shame of, of the ZIC, I think. And I should, I must ask you guys and 
our in director to uh, go to Madrid and ask for at least the uh, uh, survival, survival, one more position uh, for the group because I, I'm, I'm indeed combing white hair, so <laughs> I will retire pretty pretty soon, and and uh, uh, I think we we offer many nice expectations and uh, ideas and and fresh effort for fostering the IA, IA contribution to the solar physics world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Gallo, for this nice talk. Now, do you have any comment or question? Maya. Um, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Thank you very much for the talk. Um, maybe it's a, a technical question. Um, I was wondering how you can just fix the position of observation uh, on the sun from from a from a balloon. From a, with lots of care. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed, the 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 pointing the pointing of of the of the instruments of the telescope is. Uh, the, the, the crucial, the crucial thing. Well, a, a, even more crucial is stability of that pointing. But pointing is is, uh, is important. It is not that difficult. So a, 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 you, you you have a, a an absolute an absolute reference frame, uh, so that a, a, a you have uh, uh, some small um, find a telescope. Okay, so so you know where the sun is. And you mm, know where your fields of view are, okay. And if, if you have well referenced your finder and the, the big telescope, eh, eh, you have no no problems, provided provided the, the balloon is stable. Eh? So <clears throat> I should say I should say that this was not the case for the first flight. People may not know, but we we were blind. We didn't know where on the sun were in a point. Fortunately, fortunately, we were able to more or less know uh, where, uh, where we were uh, through spectroscopic analysis, but uh, by profiting of the uh, uh, rotation of the sun. Since, since the sun is, is rotating, the the the, uh, the west the, the uh, no the east east is approaching uh, us so it's blue shifted the uh, west is red shifted and and then <clears throat> by by measuring where our line is with respect to our uh, absolute referen reference we we were able to know the heliocentric angle of our observations. So it, it is it is a it is a technical uh, difficulty, but it is it is not that difficult. What has not been so easy is to keep stability for for the for the uh, observations. In fact, our aim for the two flights were to be continuously observing for the five and a half days, because we were above the horizon in the northern pole, so that uh, the, the sun was up there. All day long, and uh, uh, at the end, the goal was to uh, be continuously observing. This couldn't be the, the, the case, but technical difficulties, and uh, the longest time series was 30 minutes for, for the first uh, flight and 17 minutes for the second flight. We hope that the third flight, so we are challenged uh, uh, for the first flight to, to secure. This, this stability, which uh, should provide provide unprecedented uh, 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 views if we can preserve this quality uh, of observations for several hours. Okay. But how do you actually maintain the pointing? Uh, uh, <laughs> you are you are asking me things things that I, I'm. Uh, 
I don't know. Uh, 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 the uh, the gondola, the, the gondola has a, a inertia, a big inner, inertia uh, wheel uh, that controls all the all the positioning so and con pardon me stereoscopic. No, uh, stereoscopic. That? Yeah, yeah. gyroscopic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it, it is something something like a gyroscope, okay? And uh, and and uh, the the fine the fine tuning is preserved with the correlation track. Uh, my question is actually about uh, magnetic recognition. You, you mentioned that at the end it is made available to either radiation or some other uh, mechanism, and you you align the process so possible. Uh, uh, uses of the but how about actually happening? How does it go into a or into kinetic energy or whatever? Yeah, yeah. We are we are observing these every every single day. So when all these movies, beautiful movies, we we see about the sun ejecting material, uh, uh, the coronal mass ejections, uh, prominences that uh, uh, liberate. Uh, uh, from from the sun and go to interplanetary space and so on and so forth are taken energy borrowed from from the magnetic field. So it is because of these interactions down in the photosphere between the convection dynamics and the in the the full points of the magnetic fields, okay, that allows to change this magnetic energy and. <coughs> Into kinetic energy for for, for matter to to uh, a, a escape the sun, okay? or the uh, flare, big flares or something like that. And as a matter of fact, these are phenomena very relevant to our to our life on Earth. Uh, my question was uh, regarding reconnection as well. So, in principle, reconnection happens in a very uh, tiny region where mm -hmm. magnetic fields uh, uh, reconnect, actually. Yeah. And that is, uh, that is a, um, it's a scenario that is uh, uh, a place where very likely uh, large particle acceleration happens. Mm -hmm. So, it, I mean, to me, and just, just uh, and my, my understanding of a reconnection is that it accelerates uh, particles, yes. energy, but then trans, transforming all this particle acceleration into kinetic energy of a large volume of, mm -hmm. of plasma would be rather difficult. Then. Yes, and it is. Yeah. I mean, so so how, how is that happening actually, that from a yeah. very tiny region? No. Where and this phenomenon is taking place at, at many scales. So we are we are we are speaking we are speaking about very small scale reconnections. Okay, this can can happen uh, uh, to to larger scale uh, uh, loops uh, when when they are forced to to escape the sun. So uh, uh, now here, here this reconnection is taking place at a very small place. Okay. But uh, when these omega loops are uh, approaching, uh, approaching together, and they are that big, uh, half the, the, the sun big, then it is easy for them to take energy from, from, the, from the... And Allah Ala, Ala has some comments. Not yeah, I have a comment from you also. Because I think it also depends on the density of the medium. Right? Sure. I mean, as you know, the density decreases a lot yeah. when you go up. So what he's explaining is reconnection pretty low, pretty I low. guess. Yeah. But you can also have reconnection very high in higher layers when the event is isolated in the sense that density is very low and that also helps a lot to eject. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the big ejections that you may know as, you know, for our much ejections also. I mean, reconnection here, what he's explaining is very small scale and it's not happening in the photosphere. But there's also a connection happening in all the layers of the system. And um, density is a key factor to, to expel these masses. Mm -hmm. And then the second question was 
was again part of the session. Uh, so, are there observations that are simultaneous with uh, this kind of uh, events where you identify signatures of reconnection, reconnection uh, uh, with, again, observations of high energies like exploration, yeah. something like that, that you, yeah, yeah. you can localize the real yeah, Sure, that, sure, sure, yeah. sure. As I commented on, uh, the, the observations by AIA uh, instrument, which is extremely ultraviolet. Uh, I don't know, 100 nanometers or so, uh, uh, pretty good in size, qualitatively, with our, with our view. So uh, all of these, all of these uh, brightness enhancements uh, uh, occur also uh, 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 at, at these very layers, at these uh, high layers, okay? And uh, uh, in spite of the different resolutions, you can certainly associate those phenomena out there with the uh, with, uh, with our with our uh, in photosphere, in photosphere. So, so uh, mean AAA uh, 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 does not only mean that does not only mean uh, different heights, but also different energies, different different uh, uh, wavelengths. Okay, you were thinking on X-ray. We don't have X-ray information for these for these events, but you can you can also observe. Many X-ray events related to reconnection of the sun. I, indeed, most of the mag magnetohydrodynamics that you are playing with in the, uh, in the universe has its starting point from the solar magnetohydrodynamics. We have the, the best laboratory for, for that. Uh, but two very one question is the same line that was mentioned before, Maya and um, Enrique. So, did you fall during the 15 or the 30 minute time the region in the sun that is rotating? Yeah. So, all the instruments will be following that. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, the, 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 the trick is you have, you have to follow to follow also the rotation. So you cannot you cannot lose it's your future. No, 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 no. no I, I'm not that sure uh, about the position of, of this. But in principle, the the, 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 the telescope is, is able is able to maintain the pointing uh, no matter the place over the sun over the disk. Okay, and uh, uh, um, the way the way we keep. Uh, uh, watching exactly the same the same place is by a, a correlate by a correlation tracker. So <clears throat> the the gross the gross motion is compensated by the by the inertia wheels. Okay, uh, uh, but the 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 uh, small uh, high frequency motions are corrected for with a specially devoted correlation tracker that is implemented. Um, the second is really a very nice question. I use my knowledge of that. But when you talk about the material that is hotter or is going up or so on, which kind of material are you talking about? Is it hydrogen? Plasma? Is it hydrogen? Yeah, well, <laughs> plasma, plasma in the sun is very, very, very poorly ionized in the photosphere, so mostly neutral. And uh, and the, 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 the ratio of ionization increases when you go go up. So up in the corona, uh, where the AIA uh, instrument is observing, uh, you you have uh, iron 19, 20 times ionized, uh, which means several million Kelvin. Uh, down in the photosphere, the the, uh, the material is mostly neutral. Okay. Is it what you are observing, or is that most of the material of the sun is of that? No, no. Uh, this is general for 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 for, for all the sun. Well, thank you. Any further questions? No. Not uh, thank you, Jorge Carlos, for this very nice talk and this beautiful discussion we have. Thank you. Thank you very much.